and let them have dominion. The kingdom of God is within people. It's the advancement of the people that is advancing. Because of the faith kingdom. must be backed by the assignment of this ministry is found from that verse. Where we You're unto a word encounter as Pastor David Ogweli ministers God's word to you with simplicity and power. God bless you. He created them to control the earth, to control the circumstances on earth, just like God controls the heavenly. honor you. We exalt you. We thank you. Thank you for what you are doing in our time and in our days. Thank you for your presence that is in this place. We worship before your throne. We honor you. Our King and our Redeemer. My Savior. My hiding place. My glory. The lifter of my head my wealth my strength i bow my heart before your throne in reverence have your way in our lives today fill us afresh with your presence let no stone be left on top move every mountain that is standing in our paths everything that stands that raises his head against the knowledge of god let it be brought down today establish your throne let your kingdom come in our hearts let your power overrule let the kingdom of darkness be brought under subjection we give you praise have your way wonderful holy spirit have your way glory be to your name be exalted in the midst of your people in jesus name amen please find somebody and greet them tell them good morning just before you sit down. Glory be to the name of my King. Please my scripture Psalm 2 verse 7 Please I beg you in the name of Jesus Christ whatever you are doing this year connect yourself to God's global plan somewhere this year lagos will have a mission summit so that everybody will be able to connect to what some of us already know a few of you probably were in enugu so for those who were there some of these things we're saying will not be strange i will declare the decree the lord has said unto me thou art my son this day have i begotten thee verse 8 Ask me and I will give you the, the hidden for thy inheritance, the utmost part of the earth for thy possession. I will give you the hidden for thy inheritance, the utmost part of the earth for thy possession. Give it to me in that message translation. Whatever you are doing, if you want to prosper, if you want to be blessed beyond even your ability to ask, connect to God's global plan you are not the only one who has a vision God has a big plan for this world and when he saved you he planned for you to be part of that plan you are supposed to partner with the almighty God in reaching the nations in bringing the lost into the kingdom it's not a favor you're doing for God it's actually a favor you do for yourself connect to that global plan and then there are some of the things you're praying about that you won't have to struggle so much for anymore connect to it let me tell you what the Lord said next you are my son today is your birthday what do you want name it but you know when the Lord said what do you want some of us will feel that place with he gave this kind of deal to Solomon and um, the guy acts wisely.
people have asked me what exactly did Solomon ask? I said Solomon asked for the nation of Israel. Simple. That's what he asked. I know what you, you think Solomon asked for wisdom. Go and ask for it. You won't get it. You won't get what he got. He said, Pastor, I have never heard that. All my life I've been told that what he asked for was wisdom. Ask for it and see if you will get all the things he got. If you want to know what Solomon asked, it was something that wasn't for him. It was something that was going to enable him to affect the whole nation. He was just made king in the place of David. Now, um, that gentleman, David slept with the mother. The mother, Solomon's mom, was Bathsheba, somebody else's wife. I want you to get the context. So you know, there were more important things for that guy to have asked God. Bathsheba was the wife of Uriah. I, I mean, um, the Hittite, who was one of David's, you know, uh, generals, if you want. And David had that affair. A baby came out of it. In order to cover his sin, he ends up killing the husband. You heard that he was on top of his house looking. And he saw a beautiful woman taking his bath around, you know, the Bible historian said she was around 18. So you can understand a newly, probably a newly married woman. And then being the king, he uses his power to influence her to have an affair with him. Power is a very serious thing. You can, you can use it for both positive or negative. And women are attracted to it. Any type of it. There are seven variations of power, whether it's the political or the economic or spiritual or whatever. Women are pulled to that. Women feel more secured with power, around power. But there's um, a right way to relate to power. There's a wrong way. Anyway, she gets pregnant. Um, I guess that if it's in 21st century or around this time, it will, have, it will have been an abortion, and then everything will have been fine. Nobody will have known except the man upstairs. But this time around, there's no way. So he arranged for the husband to come and go and go back home. The man is supposed to be in the battlefront. And... Um, he said, go home, relax with your wife. But this guy is so loyal to the cause. He said, no way. My colleagues are in the battlefront fighting. Why will I be at home enjoying with my wife? He refused to go. When David, let me use the word president, David, you know the kind of things that happen in the corridors of power, saw that this guy was not going home. He arranged and got him drunk second offense from adultery to inducing another man to get drunk. The guy was drunk, dead drunk, so he said, go home. He said, no way. Even with alcohol, I will still not do it. That tells you that <laughs> conviction is stronger than drugs. And so, you know what he did finally? He arranged his death. He didn't want to kill him. He knew God's word that he should not do that, so he arranged it. And wrote a letter to the army general called Joab and told the man to take it to the battlefront. And of course, he took it there. What they did was they pushed him to where the enemies, very strong enemies were fighting and withdrew support. So they killed him. Now, it was well arranged. Nobody would have said his mother because it was a well arranged but the man upstairs. And so he sends a prophet after David. You're going to die. Blood is calling in your house. But anyway, David is still that man after God's heart. And he repents. What you read about is Psalm 51. You know, and all of that. 
and he said create me a clean heart O god renew a right spirit within me against thee and only thee have i seen and done that is no human beings i offended you are the one i offended and you are the only one that has power to get me out of this and of course god got him out of it but anyway god said somebody else will have to die and it will be in your lineage first of all that child is your seed he has to die the baby dies and a few other things happened. That judgment debt is hanging. I want you to be careful when you deal with people. Because sometimes you are dealing with people who have repented. And <laughs> what you are going after will come on your head. I will tell you because he said that debt. Because blood has been shed. Blood has to be shed someone must die the wages of sin is dead so the man that has committed has repented but and now death is looking for who else in this lineage is available for judgment he just has to meet a small condition let's hit him because david said cleanse me with his soap that's the blood they use his soap to apply the blood if you remember in exodus 12 when the children of Israel had to apply the blood on their door lentils. That stuff they used to apply it is not brush. It's hyssop. It's a plant that grows in the Middle East. You pluck it out, remove the shake of the sand, then you dip it in the blood basin and apply it. In the New Testament, it's faith. It's confession. Faith released by speaking. Everyone say, apply the blood of Jesus in my life. Now, what the blood applied does is that it, ha it, it hangs death. Death can't touch. So what death does is that it will look for an alternative. The Bible said, the righteous shall be delivered from death, but the wicked will fall in there in his stead. Punishment is hanging. Somebody has come under the covering of the blood and repented. Blood only works when there is repentance. So not, not when you have not acknowledged your sins. Anyway, in Egypt, the children of Israel applied the blood, so death couldn't touch them, so death moved into Egypt and started looking for. And every family where there was no blood covering killed the male child. Now, here David applies the blood and in repentance, and death can't touch the man that sinned. Now, death is traveling through the lineage of David looking for, and some people met the conditions. One of them is a man called Absalom. Rebellion, because rebels will die. It doesn't matter which church they attend. They will perish. It doesn't matter how gifted they are. The consequence of rebellion is death, is execution. He was the one God hung between heaven and earth. I have seen people commit adultery like David and God forgive them, but I've never seen God forgive one rebel in the Bible. If you find any, tell me. I've never seen him pardon one rebel. If he pardons, then he has to pardon Lucifer. But that's the sin of Lucifer. Beware of pride. Beware of it. Beware of it. In this year of abiding glory, as we are moving, some of us are already traveling at the speed of light. But there are some that the enemy will humiliate grandly. Pride. But there is the other side, which is what led me to the study. This woman ends up marrying David. Because David, now the husband is dead, he's and he decides that, okay, I'm going to take her and marry her and look after her. And then he becomes his wife. He makes it official now. This time he's not a sin because he has right to marry a widow. But of course, for human beings who keep record, they will still be there. Eh? But you know, for God, when he forgives something, he forgets it. <laughs> now, it is that relationship that was born out of wedlock that produced Solomon because the next child that comes out is Solomon. Now, you can see that the gentleman was not qualified to be a king. He was nowhere because David had legitimate children. 
And they were much older than Solomon. But there's something about God that goes for the broken, the contrite, the rejected, the one that nobody likes. <laughs> there is something about God's nature that hates people who think they are qualified, people who think they are gifted, who think they are somebody. Once in your own eyes, you are self-promoted in the eyes of God. He abases you. You count as nothing in his sight. There's something about God. If we are talking about the man God will use, and inside you, you, you feel broken. You feel like you don't qualify. You are the type of person he loves. Because that's how he found David. David, again, was that child that was born out of wedlock by his father. Jesse also had that kind of thing. He was traveling in the lineage of Judah. Amazingly, that's the lineage Jesus came from. Thank God. He had to be conceived of a virgin so that that sense of the father doesn't get inside him. Because if he did, all those women in his ministry would have been in trouble. But that's the problem. The problem started with Judah, the founder of that lineage. He slept with his daughter-in-law. He used to carry her lords. And he had a friend who arranges women for him. You see, even in, in, among covenant people, you find some of these imperfections. In this particular case, it's a generational problem. Anyway, the long and short story, I don't want to, but is that that guy arranges a halot for him. But there was a lady standing by the roadside dressed in a particular, and he arranges a woman for him, and he goes and sleeps with her. But the lady makes a request and takes his signet, his ring. And he didn't know he was his daughter-in-law. Anyway, that lady ends up pregnant again, and Judah says, ah, she must be killed, though. Because she found out that her daughter-in-law was pregnant. She didn't know it was the same lady. And why they were talking about, according to the law, uh, she has to be stoned to death. The lady said, um, ask her God to come. He said, do you want to know who gave me this belly? He said, yes. He said, it's the man that has this ring. Anyway, there was a reason why she did that, which I don't want to get into the story. In those days when your husband dies with no child, the brother will have to come and go in to the woman to get. She wasn't a harlot. But the reason she posed as one is that she saw that the father-in-law is into this stuff. So she marries the son. The son dies. And the promise that the younger boy was going to marry her. So she was told to wait till the boy grows up. You know this kind of promise, I'm going to America, I'll come back to get you. Don't get involved in those kind of nonsense. Then they say, wait, and he wait one year, two years, three years, until a young boy that was a teenager grows to become a man. Who knows, maybe 15 years have passed, 13 years. And when the young boy grew, instead of keeping the promise, the man now found a younger girl for him to marry. And so she was so heartbroken, he said, and I wasted all my life waiting for this, but you could have told me to go since. Why did I stay here waiting for him all these years? This is so unfair. He said, okay, we'll settle it. And I'm fine. He keeps carrying girls. So he went somewhere, arranged like a girl, and was on the way. The pool's like a hard lot for And it was him that came and carried her, slept with her. And she got pregnant. Amazingly, that child that came out of her was the father, the great-grandparent of Jesus. Is the lineage from where Jesus came. Are you seeing? Now, the question now is, why does God keep using such people? Because if, if you study God well, he said, when David was writing, he said, a broken and a contrite heart, oh God, you will never bypass. When God is looking for people, 
he sees pride, but you have all the talent, all the anointing. You smell in his sight. But he sees somebody that is messed up. She might be a, 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 a you know, like Millie Magdalene. She might even be a criminal. or She might be a harlot. But she sees a broken and a contrite heart. A person that can be corrected. A person that can repent easily. A person that is not proud, that doesn't feel like whatever. God picks that person. He cleanses off that mess and he uses that person. Now, that is the lineage. That's the lineage from where David came. So now when he got to David's father, Jesse, he had seven sons, legitimately. But he plays away match. I hope you can get that African slam. He plays one outside marriage. And a little boy was conceived. His name was David. And somehow, he kind of treats the small boy 